Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I believe in paying for the apps and services that give you value. I think it's super important to support creators. I think it's important to support these services so that they can continue to function in the future and you can continue to get value of them for years to come. Now, on the other hand, I understand that on a personal level, you can't pay for every single thing. You can't pay for every app that comes out. You can't pay for the $10, $20 a month subscription to everything, right? You'll just, you'll go broke that way. <laughs> so there are things that you need to use the free versions for. And so I wanted to go over 10 of those today that I got tons of value from in the past year and I will into 2021. This is a companion video to another one I made about a week ago with 10 apps that I paid for in 2020 and I got tons of value from and I think those were super worth it for me. So today I'm gonna to go over 10 free things that I think are really great. I'll go a little quicker this time uh, because they're free. If you are intrigued, just try them out. They're totally, uh, there's no risk involved. So first up is the YouTuber one that I have to mention first and that's Notion. Notion is totally free uh, this year. They updated their free plan to give you tons more functionality and basically, I don't know why I would pay for Notion at this point, right? Like there's some stuff you can do um, with a few extra features, upload more files, bigger files, that sort of thing. But for me, I don't need that at all. So I'm not paying for it and I'm getting tons of value from it. I run this YouTube channel from it. I'm not quite at the level of like Thomas Frank or Ali Abdel or anything, um, but I'm getting quite a bit of value from it. And I think it's totally worth looking at. It can be a note taker for you, it can be a task manager for you, it can be a project manager for you. It can do all this stuff. Um, you just kind of have to figure out what you want it to be. And then odds are you can twist it into doing that thing for you. Next up is Obsidian. Obsidian is kind of a Rome research alternative. That's kind of how it's pitched and it's completely free to download for Windows and Mac, uh, Linux as well. And it basically gives you something similar to what Rome Research does. It's not exactly the same, um, but it has a lot of the same functionality like backlinks and sort of like organizing your thoughts. It has that kind of grid thing that shows like, here's how all your thoughts link together. Um, I use it actually just for taking notes at work, uh, which for me is something I want to be satisfying, simple and fast, but I don't necessarily need all the stuff Rome provides. And so the $15 a month I was paying for it um, because my work wouldn't pay for it, I had to pay for it. Um, I decided to go with the free option. Obsidian has been really great for that. Again, worth checking out as kind of an alternative to Rome if you like the idea of Rome, but don't want, don't want to pay for it. Then I talked about audiobooks in my last one where I use Audible and Apple Books for most of my audiobooks. I started using Libby this year and I should have been using this for a long time before that. The app is surprisingly good and then it uses libraries uh, to basically lend out digital books, so eBooks and audiobooks. And so all you have to do is link your library card. If you don't have one, go to your local library and get one. Um, you can just link your library card to it and then you can start borrowing books. And so you typically get them for like two weeks at a time or something. Some books that are in higher demand you need to wait for, and then you just say, I'd like to put a hold on this, and then they send you a notification once the book is ready, and you can start listening to it right away, or reading it right away. Um, really good, totally free. Again, just get a library card, start using it, and I think you'll actually be surprised how much you can get for free <laughs> that you were previously paying for every month to get through Audible or per book through Apple Books. Another web service I've made a video about, that's gonna be a trend in this video, <laughs> is Airtable. So Airtable is a kind of database management, spreadsheet creation, automation platform. There's tons of stuff you can do with Airtable. Um, I personally use it to quantify my life. I do like a form that I fill out every single night uh, that basically asks me questions like, did you work out today? Did you walk the dog? How many times and how far did you walk the dog? Um, it asks me like, what movies did you watch? What games did you play? Like just so I can kind of log what I do every day. And then it really just makes it available on the web. It's available on every platform. And then if I ever need the data just to get out of there, I can export it as a CSV and then do whatever I want with it, however I want. So Airtable is fantastic. You can pay for it, but I haven't found a need for it. Now, this is a recommendation I probably wouldn't have made a couple years ago, wouldn't have seen myself making certainly, is Edge. So Microsoft Edge is, I'll just say it, a great browser. It is fantastic, especially if you like Chrome because it renders every web page correctly because developers only test in Chrome a lot of the time, <laughs> but you like how your websites look and work in Chrome, but you kind of don't like Chrome. You don't like how much battery it uses, you don't like how much energy it uses in general, and you just don't like Google or whatever. Like, these are all valid reasons to be kind of begrudgingly use, using Chrome. Edge gives you a Chromium-based browser that's faster, I think, than Chrome. Uh, seems to be a little more nice on your battery, although it's not as good as Safari, but it's a really good alternative. I think the UI changes they've made from Chrome are all for the better. I'm a big fan of this browser. I use it quite a bit, and especially if you're going between Android, Windows, Mac, if you're kind of bouncing between the platforms, it's really good at syncing across all of your devices across different platforms. 
Then I've got two apps, and these are both apps that I discovered this year when I was looking for cool new widgets in iOS 14. And the first one is Foodnoms. Foodnoms, these are actually kind of related. Foodnoms is a way to track uh, the food you're eating. Um, so if you want a calorie count or do whatever you want, you want to like hit certain goals about how much protein you take in or sugar or something like that, you can do that with Foodnoms. Uh, it kind of goes up against the MyFitnessPal and those sorts of apps, um, but I think at LifeSum, I think it has a better UI and then it has some really cool stuff with like machine learning stuff. So if you scan a barcode with the camera, which all these do, if it doesn't have it in its database and it's a new food, um, you can just go ahead and scan the uh, nutrition label with your phone's camera and it will use machine learning to detect all the things and then add it for you. It's super accurate. You can choose to, you sh I would recommend it so it'll make it better for everyone, but you can choose or choose not to uh, have it upload those uh, new food things to its online database so that other people can get that for free the next time they scan the item. It's really good. I think it's made by one person, so fantastic stuff. Again, it's free. There's a subscription you can pay if you want some more features, but I use it for free and it's been totally great. The other one is an app called Zero, and this is for kind of the opposite. <laughs> this is for not eating. So if you're fasting and you want to track that and keep track of how uh, much time you have left in your goal, you can use Zero for free. Uh, it's a beautiful app again. It lets you do some preset times. I think it's 12, 16, and 24 hour fasts. Uh, by default, you can do for the free one, and there's no limits on that. Or if you want to do custom ones, you want to, I think there's some competitions you can do that need to be paid for. There's a subscription as well, but you don't have to to get kind of basic fast tracking through the app. Then we got a few more here. Uh, the next one is Alfred. Alfred is a spotlight replacement for your Mac. And so basically you map it to option spacebar or command spacebar or whatever shortcut you want. Um, but it's an alternative to spotlight and lets you do Google searches, lets you do um, Amazon searches, YouTube searches, lets you launch apps really quickly. I think it does a better job of spotlight of launching apps quickly too. And so you get all that for free, and I think that's totally worth it. There is a paid option here as well. There's a power pack, they call it, that you can buy, and it's basically a one-time purchase and gets you um, all the pro features for the duration of that version of Alfred. And so that gives you stuff with like workflows you can create, some more custom stuff. You can actually theme the app. Um, I think you can do that for free as well. So there's tons of stuff here, but as a great app launcher and kind of quick Google search option, uh, as an alternative to Spotlight, Alfred is fantastic. Then we've got kind of a doozy here, Figma. So Figma is maybe the best design app in the world right now. <laughs> it's so powerful, so many people use it. And if you're using it for personal use, it's totally free. Uh, you can have basically an unlimited number of files that you're doing. I think you're limited to two projects um, to sort those, but for personal use, I think that's totally great. Um, you can share links, you can share with them with other people and everything. Uh, if you want to use it for corporate use, if you want to use it um, with multiple users and kind of have permissions and everything, you have to start paying for it. But if you're just trying to do some design work, some basic stuff on your own, um, even as kind of a lightweight Photoshop alternative, it's not good for editing photos, but it can do some of that stuff you might have been doing in Photoshop or something like that. Um, it's really great for that. It's shocking how much you can do in this free app. And then finally is maybe the nerdiest one of them all, but it's really important that I think one of the most useful things I use, it's YouTube DL. And so this is a command line tool. There's some apps that do it kind of for you and have a UI on top of it, but the command line tool is really good. Um, you can go on their website, uh, I'll link that in the description of course, where you can just kind of paste in three lines of code basically into your terminal and it'll install it for you and you can use it from then on. But basically once it's installed on your computer, Mac or Windows, you just type YouTube DL and then enter a URL for the video you want to download. It'll download it to your computer. If you want to get specific formats, you can do that, like specific resolutions. You can tell it exactly which ones to get. This is how we do things where like, I'll cut away to like a clip from an Apple presentation and I'll do like source Apple at the bottom left of the video frame. Um, that's how I get those because I just download the YouTube video, import it. Um, that's how you, everybody does it basically. If you're watching a YouTube channel and they show like a clip from another video, odds are they used YouTube DL to get that clip. So um, super great tool, totally free. There was some drama with them getting taken off GitHub recently, but that's all resolved. So <laughs> nothing to worry about there. But YouTube DL is invaluable um, and is a wonderful, wonderful tool. So yeah, those are 10 things that I used totally for free in 2020. Um, like I said, some of them can be paid and you can get some more stuff out of them. You can get some um, more features, but frankly, I never saw the use for it. And I think that you may as well. You'll be really impressed with what you can get from it. And so that is it for me today. Hopefully you watch both of these videos um, and see some things that you can pay for and you're gonna get great value from and other ones you can use for free. 
and never pay for ever <laughs> and other people will um, maybe, maybe some of these that i mentioned today you're like the free tier is great but i actually wanted some of these premium features that's fine too um, but hopefully you got some great ideas for things you can do going into the new year um, to be more productive in 2021 and hopefully a more normal year but we'll see how that goes um, thank you again for watching i'll see you here next time bye bye